Welcome back to another episode of Guns Explained. I'm Jordan Mitchell. Today I want to talk just briefly about how to make ballistic gelatin. If you're a law enforcement officer or agency and you want to try your own ballistics testing, we're going to show you briefly how to do it today. First and foremost, I want to talk about how important it is to make sure all of your equipment is clean. Make sure and clean your buckets, make sure and clean your molds that you're using so that everything you're using is appropriate. It's not going to have any debris so that the gel is cloudy or poorly mixed. Make sure everything is super spotless clean. Second of all, what you need to do is you need to take nice hot water and fill up a bucket. Hot water is important because just like making jello at home, you need nice warm water so that the powder mix dissolves evenly and gives a nice consistent texture throughout the gel. Second of all, you need to make sure that you're using the right measurements. So what we have done is we've taken and already weighed out the weight of our bucket and our Folgers official coffee can here. And we've got a 23.7 pound weight that we need. And that includes the five gallon bucket weight and then 2.8 pounds of ballistic gelatin powder mix. Uh, ballistic gelatin, it's, it's a little tricky. Every time we get in a new batch, we always go and we make a block right out of the gate to test it just to make sure there aren't any uh, inconsistencies with it because sometimes we get some mix that we have to add just a fraction amount more of powder or just a fraction amount less. So there's no, there's no exact formula to this, but we know it's 10% ballistic ordnance gelatin. So that means 10% ratio of powder to water. So after we've weighed out our ballistic gel powder mix and we've got it into the bucket, we need to make sure and mix it up properly. We have a drill bit here that we've uh, situated so with it, it gives it a nice thorough job in mixing the powder into the water. You pour it into your mold and with the mold, it's important to remember you need to have enough length of the mold to hold the bullets that you're trying to trap in there. So a minimum of 16 inches on that mold is what you need. We prefer you try to go about 18 to 20 inches in the mold if you can. And you can use anything. You can use something that's, that's die cast out of aluminum. You can use something that's Tupperware. You can use a bucket that you've retrofitted. What, the size of the mold is all that matters. What you use is less important. Then what we're going to do afterwards is we're going to pop the gel out. It has to sit overnight to settle first and foremost. Then you scoop the frothy foam off the top and uh, give it a nice clean look. Then it needs to sit for a second day in a refrigerator so that you get it down to the appropriate temperature. You need it to be just above freezing. So you want it to be between about 37 to 40 degrees temperature. And then we're going to go out, we're going to shoot it with a BB to calibrate the ballistic gelatin to make sure that it works. Another key measurement to remember is you want about 580 feet per second out of a standard 17 caliber BB. And you need that to penetrate about three and three quarters of an inch into that ballistic gelatin. So you're looking at about three and a half to three and three quarters penetration. It's pretty ideal. It's going to make sure you've got the right consistency of ballistic gelatin so that when you're testing your ammunition, you get a penetration that you're looking for so that you know your bullets are going to perform the right way. As always, thanks for joining us here at Salt Lake Wholesale Sports and for Guns Explained, I'm Jordan Mitchell.